Next thing we're going to do is look at stairs. Okay, so I there's not like with the walls, there's a lot of complexity. Like even on day one, I have a lot to teach you. S floors are just flat profile plates, right? There's nothing special about them, generally speaking. Um, but you do need to know how to create floors at different levels. So I move that that door up, and that's because, you know, like, I don't know, maybe it's a sloping site and it's on a hillside, right? You know, like imagine a little hill's going down like this, and then, you know, whatever. So you want to, or maybe there's like a back deck balcony or something. Um, so we're going to create a floor that leads up to that door, okay? And that door is at, I think it was three feet high. Yeah, three feet high. Okay. So um, the way I'm going to do that is to um, create two separate floors, okay? You, you can't just like crack the floor and move the plate up. You have to actually create a separate floor. Now, um, in, before I do that, I want to show you like selection methods. And when you start having geometry that overlays on top of one another, sometimes it gets a little difficult, right? Um, I know that there's a floor there, but if I click in this space, I don't select it. Right, so so the old way in earlier versions of Revit, you ow, um, you had to actually go to the wall, and then you would have to like tab, you have to hit tab to cycle through the things that you can select, right? Um, and I mean you still do that, but you tab, and then it's like oh that's selecting the whole profile, which is a really nifty tool by the way, right? It's selecting the whole length of wall that is attached to the one that I touched. But then I tab again and you see it's selecting just the perimeter. And if, I, if I'm hovering, the little um, tag tells me what it is I would be selecting. So that said floors, floor generic. So if I click that, it selects the floor. In Revit 2017, I think, it might have been part of 2015. I forget when they introduced it. Um, there's a new thing where now I can just select this plate. Um, if you look in the bottom right corner, and I'm going to zoom this up a little bit. So, oops, that needs to go away. Um, so the bottom right corner is, um, there are a couple of little tags down here, right? There's some with a couple layers, there's a little pin, there's a little blue um, plate. Uh, that little blue one with the red X, it's called select elements by face, and it's a toggle. So if I do select elements by face, all I have to do is click on the face of something and it will select that. It's mostly useful for floors. So click that. Now you can just click the, the face of the floor. All right. And then the real thing here that I'm doing is I'm going to chop out that right-hand room, bottom right room, and then I'm going to create a new floor for that room. So I'm going to say edit boundary, um, and I'm, I'm going to um, basically I'm going to go to my boundary line, and I'm going to start on the... Um, and let me get real close here, right? There are a couple of object, object snaps in here in this zone. I'm going to go to the one that is aligned to the inside face of that room right here. And I'm going to pull it over. Um, and then, uh, so we can, we've got a couple modify tools that are going to make this a little faster for me. There's a, a fillet tool that I think is going to be really cool. So you go to this little guy right there, trim extend to corner. TR is what the um, hotkey is for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fill it that corner. And then, I'm, or I, I say fill it because in the AutoCAD days, I used to do fill it radius zero in order to accomplish this. Yeah. But, but I know for those of you who never used AutoCAD, um, I'm just confusing you by saying that. Sorry. Um, so then I'm going to do that to this corner as well. And I'm going to do it to this corner here. And then I can get rid of that guy. And then now I've got a complete profile. I'm going to hit check. And it'll close, and then I don't have anything else there. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I j let me go back. So it looked like this. Uh, sorry, it looked like that. I drew that line, and then I just grabbed that uh, trim to corner tool, and I I kind of just nifty did a little nifty trick where I just grabbed this one and connected that corner, and then I grabbed this one and reconnected that corner. And then I grabbed this one and connected that corner, and then selected this one and deleted it. And then check when you're done. Cool? Mine is adding another wall. Uh, okay, you activated the wall command? Yeah. Okay, um, I'll come check it out.
probably did. But uh, yeah, so um, anyway, I'll give you guys a minute or two while I'm checking that out to get caught up, and then I'll continue on. All right, let's resume. Um, so this isn't going to be like super clean architecture unless I clean this up. So I'm just going to uh, um, show you the align command. Um, so I basically, like, this is a floor that's going to be raised three feet, and I don't want to have, like, this little opening here where it's just three feet high with nothing. I mean, you'd put a rail there if you're doing it architecturally, but I want to show you how to use the align command because that's, like, outside of create similar, the align command is, like, the second coolest tool ever created for any architecture program ever, 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 okay? So you type in AL, and it activates the align command. And then you click on the line that you want to align something to, right? So I'm going to click on the edge of the slab here. And then you click on the, the face or element that you want to be aligned to it. And that's going to be the, the front face of this wall here. And watch. Boom. Flipped over there. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Right? Totally nerding out. But, yeah. Awesome. Show it one more? Okay. So... Um, align command, right? AL activates the align command. You first do the line that you want to align to. Click it. And then you do what you want to be aligned to it. And that's that. Um, right? No, right? Sorry, before that, it should be, there's no command. It's just, first of all, it's that way. There's what? There's no command. It's not in that A AL. Um, it's, on, it's on the modify tab. Uh, this guy right there. Uh, I'll come check it out. Um, but guys, let's. Uh, it's A L. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's let's kind of do do the floor and stair, and then um, we'll continue on. So anyway, um, I'm going to reutilize that uh, create similar command, and I'll click on this, and then type in C S. Right. So that immediately brings me in. To drawing a profile for another floor. How awesome is that, right? So um, this one, on the other hand, is, well, actually, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do an exterior one. So I'm going to click uh, the box one this time, right? Because the profile I'm creating is actually, um, it's actually going to be a rectangle, right? Because I'm going to go from this corner. We're in a new floor. Yeah. So I'm going from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner, and that just created the whole rectangle for the floor right there. So I just check that, and it's done. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'll make sure you guys all get there before I continue. All right, so to wrap up the slab element here, um, I, want, I want the top side of the slab to be level with the, the bottom of the door, right? So... We're, now that we're working in elevation, you just have to understand like what the default elevation baseline datum, like base datum line, um, is for each type of element. So the door is actually built in such a way that when you put it at level zero, the bottom of the door is at level zero. Floors, on the other hand, actually exist under the baseline, right? So there's the there's the level. Let me pull this back in. Um, if you guys want to pull this in, you just grab that little purple circle, but. Um, so the, the floor, if it's, if it's set to zero, zero, it extrudes down. The thickness of the floor extrudes down. That's very important. So, and it's a structural principle because like the, the structure of buildings is going to be basically built off of the top of slab or top of floor, uh, sheathing, right? So, um, anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is move this up so that that floor is, um, right under that. So I'm going to make this a three foot height offset from level. And now that moved up. Okay. Now, looking at it in 3D though, um, I, have, I have walls that are extending down below that slab. And I want to pull those walls up so that they meet that slab instead. So, one of the cool things I can do is grab um, these three walls that are sort of engaging that, um, that slab element that's, that's a little uneven. You can see the, the differences here, right? Um, see these little features up on modify wall? Attach top base and detach top base. 
Um, we can say attach top base, and we can put it on the floor. Oh, that's top to base of something. Never mind. I'll use that later. Um, what I'm going to do is um, trim that. So I'm going to say SL, and I'm going to trim this wall here. And then I'm going to take these three walls, and I'm going to uh, revise the base constraint of those three walls. So that's uh, under wall pro um, under properties under uh, base offset, and I'm going to make those three feet as well. So now when you look at it in 3D, those walls exist where that slab is. Well, is this one cut, right? Yeah, I just did the one cut. Really all right, I'll go back. So, <laughs> so all, I, all I did was um, elevate that slab. OK, the slab is elevated. This wall is one wall, and um, it we need to split it so that I can raise it here and leave it extending all the way down there. So I go back to plan. I get my um, split tool. That's this one right here, split element. And then I go and cut this wall right at the wall line. Following? No protests? OK. Then I select all three of these, and I change my base constraint to the same value, three feet. That's it. Questions? Yes. Okay.